Good morning, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you uh, for joining us today at our autumn edition of your Overseas Home virtual event. My name is Richard Weyer and I'm one of the hosts for today's event um, and for this particular seminar or, or presentation as it most of it will be. Um, uh, we're very, we'll be focusing today on financial planning uh, and tax planning uh, if you're moving to France. Um, we're very fortunate to be joined by a specialist in that field, namely Malcolm McDowell from Chase Buchanan. Um, uh, Malcolm is going to share a short presentation with us outlining the key, key things you need to know about, you need to consider uh, when you're planning a, a relocation to France. Um, and then after that, we do invite lots of questions from you uh, for Malcolm. So um, if you've got anything, you can type it in the Q&A box, which you should see on your dashboard. Just type your question in there and then I shall field the question to, to Malcolm. Take advantage of having him here. He's kind of given his time up. So um, it's not often these guys will give up, especially a Saturday morning, um, a sunny Saturday morning to um, sit in his office and, and answer questions about tax and financial planning. So um, really appreciate that, Malcolm. Uh, just a little bit of background quickly about who we are and, and why this event is, is even being held. Well, your overseas home, we've been helping property buyers and property relocators from the UK and, and further afield for, for around 10 years now. Um, and we do this by um, offering uh, uh, buying guides, uh, sourcing news and publishing news on our website um, from people we have on the ground in different countries. And then, of course, we like to connect you through these events to specialists like Malcolm um, and all those different types of specialists who you need to, to make a successful relocation or second home purchase abroad. Um, and don't forget, we also have a team in, in our office in London who will offer one to one consultations about your plans to buy abroad and hook you up with the right people. Um, you probably know this, this seminar is, is part of a bigger event, which, uh, which is being held in a virtual hall. Malcolm has a, a booth there, so it's available after this to go and chat to uh, in real time um, and ask him any further questions, swap contact details, and you can take your inquiries um, beyond this, this event. And hopefully he can help you in the future. Um, but do ask questions during as well, so we can all learn uh, and from each other's questions and the uh, answers that Malcolm will give. So that is enough from me. Malcolm, over to you, sir. Would you like Thank to start you. your presentation? Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can all hear me. Uh, put some comments in the uh, in the question section if you've got any any problems um, in talk technical or, or whatever. But um, I think everyone can hear and see me okay. So I'll get started with the presentation straight away. I'll just start by sharing my screen. Hopefully everyone can see that. Not showing yet. Oh, here we go. It worked earlier. We just, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. All right. Brilliant. Okay, let's get cracking. Right. Okay. So this really is an overview, high-level overview of French tax. The best way to think of this. Um, there are all sorts of things that you need to think about when you uh, move to France. You finally buy your property, um, and this is going to be a rundown, very high-level overview of those of those things. Um, right, so a little bit about me straight away, just very brief. Um, I live in the UK now. I've been here for uh, almost three years, came back just before COVID. Um, but I was uh, abroad before then for, for 18 years. So, you know, been there, done that, got the uh, lived in seven different countries, most of them in Europe, but not all of them. So everything that you're thinking of going through now, I've been there and gone through it myself. So um, we're thinking about specifically France today, so I'll go through that today um, and we'll go through whatever kind of things you need to think about to become kind of French tax compliant and to um, mitigate any kind of French tax uh, and these sorts of things and other related issues. Your slides disappeared, Malcolm. Can you see it? Yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll come back again. Back. There we go. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. 
So first things first, um, won't spend too much time on this one. This is basically um, social security contributions in France and the percentages you need to think about. Um, this is the equivalent of national insurance in France. This is what you do on your pace You get your pace in France. Um, next thing, right, income tax. Um, slightly less odious than the UK, especially if you're on a lower income. So um, remember though that these change all the time, um, usually once a year, usually indexed, um, but it's very easy to check these things. You just type into Google French tax um, bandings and the latest one will come up right on the top of Google. But this is the latest one for 2022. So you can see what's going on there. Um, and they can work out yourself which one you kind of fall into. Okay. Um, next is all for all those of you who are lucky enough to be earning lots of money um, will fall into these uh, tax bandings as well. So this is an addition to the previous page. So you can see them sitting there um, and they will tax you on worldwide income. Okay. So generally speaking, what the French do is they go after people with high, high net worth, basically. Um, people with lots of property scattered around the place, people with lots of money scattered around the place, um, and they will come after that with regard to um, capital gains um, and things. So, uh, and of course, income tax. So these are the bandits for income tax, pretty straightforward. I don't really need to spend time on that one, but there are a couple of other slides that um, require a little bit of covering. Okay, so this is the big one that most people press about. So let's cover this because there's a lot of nonsense about this on the internet. And um, this is exactly how it is. Um, so uh, and I'll explain this now. The French will come after high net worths, generally speaking, um, especially if you've got property scattered around, um, but you don't have to worry about it as much as you think. Um, anything over 1.3 million euros will be taxed as per that um, sliding scale there. Um, the 1.3, however, if you do go over that 1.3, um, you're only taxed from between 0.5% from between 800 and 1.3. Okay, and then after that, the tax pendings are, are pretty straightforward as you However, there's also a big caveat to this. You are not subject to this tax in the first five years of you being a tax resident in France. So if you do turn up in France with a large property portfolio, there's five years for you to do something about it. Okay, either sell them or, or whatever it is, put them into a, into a company or all these sorts of things. Um, and there's, you know, this is something that you obviously need to think about. Um, because a lot of the Brits that I speak to, they're, they're very property focused. Um, I get that, um, you know, a lot of us are Thatcher's children, if you like, <laughs> bricks and mortar, bricks and mortar. And uh, so we've all gone around buying property, things like that. So this is something to bear in mind, but don't worry about it for the first five years, it'll only come in then. And your property in France is also included there. Okay, moving on swiftly <clears throat> to the next topic, right. I won't spend too much time on this one, but I do need to cover it because it's not something that we ever see in the UK. It's a it's a something specific to the French. It's income from movable properties. So anything that's not bricks and mortar. So things like if you've got a Lamborghini that you're renting out, or if you've got um, lovely artwork hanging on your walls that's appreciating in value, that kind of stuff, that is actually subject to French. Okay, um, not worry, there are things we can do about it, but it's a tax I need to tell you about because it doesn't exist in the UK, it doesn't, does exist in France. If you think about it logically, you don't really have this problem most of the time. Most of your, your properties inside your house, outside your house, like cars, most of them are going to be depreciating assets. They're not going to become unbeats, okay? I'm talking about income that comes from any of your movable objects and income that comes from um, or capital appreciation on you know, things like uh, antique um, paintings, this sort of thing. It's not going to apply to most people. Okay, but I do need to cover this. 
Okay, next, your pensions. Okay, so most of you will at some point, once you move to France, be drawing down on your UK pensions. You just need to make them French compliant. That's all. So, um, and you also make sure that you're paying tax in France and not paying tax in the UK. There's obviously a double tax agreement between the French and the UK. It does cover pensions, so nothing for you to worry about. There is some paperwork that you will need to fill in when you arrive in France and you start drawing down or you're already drawing down on your UK pension just to make sure that you're not paying tax twice. So you will then set this up. The French authorities will get that. You go to the French authorities, they stamp a piece of paper that you should fill in. That goes to the HMRC, they stamp it as well. And then that goes to your pension provider in the UK. They then pay that money to you gross in France. Okay, so that you then pay the tax in France. Okay, then so you then declare it in France as, as per the UK. So nice and simple, nothing to worry about. But that's if you're already in drawdown. If you've got pensions which aren't in drawdown yet, then you need to either you need to speak to me basically because it all depends. It's very bespoke. Um, there are things that you will need to do uh, so that you're not hammered by a Maltese revenue and customs and the French as well. So yeah, get in touch. That's something we need to we definitely need to speak about. And it's um, very bespoke, depends on your circumstances, depends when you're retiring, and it depends what type of pension you've got. Okay, so please just drop me a line. Um, next, inheritance tax. Right, this is complicated. So I've made it as simple as possible. Right? Um, in the UK, you have nil tax, uh, nil, uh, nil rate band, which will vary anywhere between 325,000 all the way up to um, a million, depending on your circumstances. In France, it's not like that. So once you do your 183 days and you're a tax resident in France, as far as the French tax authorities are concerned, you are liable for inheritance tax when you and your spouse, that one, um, pass. And it is um, the, the tax free allowance is much lower, the mill rate ban is much lower than it is. However, bad news aside, there is a very simple way of uh, and again, speak with me. Um, I can, um, as you can see, the, uh, the bandings are relatively odious and extremely odious once you have a large amount that you're passing on, um, but they do start at a lower as well so anything over a hundred thousand that you're passing on it will be taxed and then they will tax worldwide assets you don't care where you're hiding it yeah they will find it and they will tax it so just come to me and i can show you a very simple way of mitigating there are things in france there are um products in france that the french tax authorities recognize that you can put your assets in and so that uh, they're protected of course the french Moving Ma to their country. Malcolm, um, Malcolm, yes. Can I just stop you there very quickly? We're losing some of the words. I don't know if your microphone is. Are you, where are you speaking straight into your. Um, yeah. Hey. Yeah. I'm talking straight. Maybe it's in. a distance. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. Maybe I'll move forward a little bit further. Go a bit closer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah apologies. Okay. So, uh, inheritance tax, again, come to me. It's a bit more odious in France than it is in, uh, in the UK. But uh, as easy to mitigate in, in France as it is to mitigate in the UK as well. Uh, inheritance tax is a voluntary tax that you pay if you don't if you don't like it like your kids. Okay, <laughs> so make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> but you can't do it on your deathbed. It's something you need to organise in advance. So when you come to France, make sure you, this is something that you speak to me about. Okay. Next, uh, tax on traditional assets and portfolios outside of France, inside or outside of France. Okay, so this is nice and simple. If you've got um, an investment portfolio on a platform or something like that, um, then uh, in, in the UK or if you've got an ISA, it's very simple. You just need to take that money. You can keep it in the same investments if you want. Um, you just need to make it French because the French will come after it from capital gains tax. Um, so just, again, speak with me with regard to that. Um, when you have uh, capital redemption bonds and money within those, it does get a little bit complicated. So speak with me about that. But what we'll do is we'll take the money out of those 
and put them into the French compliant uh, vehicles, which again, keep with me about any time. Um, the same thing, the best, and the, the, they got some very good products, which are much better than what you had in the UK. So there's a there's a there's a product that they that they speak about a lot in France. It's like an ISA on steroids, um, and basically it was the same thing. It will protect you from any kind of capital gains that you get on your on your assets, and will also protect you from uh, inheritance tax. So that's something you need to speak with me about, and it's something that um, the French will uh, recommend. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Um, like I say to everyone, you know, we all have to pay tax, that's a given, but there's no need to leave a tip. All right, so all you need to do is have a chat with me. Um, obviously, once you've got your, uh, before you've got your property sorted, or after you've got your property sorted, if you've already got a property sorted, then speak with me. If you're about to get it done, speak with me. Even if it's uh, months away, have a chat and I can get your, your help you get your duck in row with regards to um, getting prepared for coming to France. It is very simple, but you need someone to speak to someone who knows what they're talking about. Because if you try and get the information off the internet, all of it's going to be very inaccurate. There'll be bits and bobs. Uh, the stuff that I've I've had to spend quite a lot of time putting people straight from stuff that they've read on the internet. So please use this um, this uh, presentation as your Bible. It is completely up to date. And um, if I need to make any changes to it, I'll, I will do that as, uh, as the French do their changes as well. I'm giving it out to my clients and let them know. But please use this as your, as your high level overview. And uh, now I'll pass it over to my colleague and uh, we'll field some questions. Thank you very much, Malcolm. Very interesting. Um, covered a lot of stuff there. Uh, we've, got, we've got some questions coming in. Um, First one is about the UK state, state pension. Can it be paid directly into a French bank account? Yes, it can. And is that correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. So exactly how this will work. So um, it's exactly as I've, um, I've described earlier. Um, you basically got you know, three types of pensions and that's one of them. And uh, it goes through exactly the same process. You turn up in France, you go to the French tax authorities, they will give you a form. You fill in that form, they stamp it. You send it to HMRC, they look at it, they stamp it. It then goes to your pension provider, be that a private pension, be that a final salary, or be that a, 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 a state pension. They will then pay that money gross, and then the French will then take their, their uh, um, tax off, depending on um, what kind of band you're in uh, overall. Um, yeah. Nice and simple, but make sure you do that as soon as you turn up in France and speak to tax authorities. Say, I'm getting these pensions, and they'll give you a, a, a fill in and go through that process again. I okay, um, I'm not sure if this is more for a, a lawyer, um, property lawyer, rather than you. But the question yeah. is, let's let's have a go. Yeah. Um, so it's from um, looks like a couple. Um, and they're going to leave their house in France to their children. They're not French resident or French tax resident. Um, so are there any any things they need to think about if they do that in terms of tax? Oh, right. Do, yeah. Does it make any sense to put the property in their name from the start? So when they buy the property, put it yeah. into their children's name? No, 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 no. OK, so that's a different thing. If you're not a tax resident in France and you've got a property in France that you're passing on to your children, not to worry. I'm going to assume you've got nothing to worry about from the French tax authorities because you're not a French tax resident. Okay, so don't worry about that. What will happen? What you need to think about is Majesty's revenue and custom, because they're going to view that as your worldwide assets. So it's HMRC. Because I'm assuming that you're, you're a UK tax resident. So it's Majesty's revenue and customs that you need to deal with. Okay, and again, like I mentioned earlier. There are very simple things that you can set up you feel that that brings you over your one million uh, nil rate band or whatever your nil rate band happens to be. Um, but that is something that you need to deal with in the UK. That's what you have no French tax to worry about in that situation um, because your French, your French property can be counted as um, part of your nil rate band 
your commercially revenue and custom um, inheritance tax. Okay, so I need to speak to you know exactly what that is, but just to give you a couple of things, um, it'll, if you're living in the house, then it will count as 175 each. The both of you there, husband and wife, 175 each on top of your 325s each. So that will mean that that property will count towards your nil rate ban. It doesn't matter, and this is a very good point, where that property is. The important thing is that you're living in it. Okay, so that's just one thing. It will count towards the managed revenue and customs. So um, it will count towards your nil rate ban. But talk to me because, um, you know, as soon as you're, if you're living in one country and got property in another, we need, I need to know, I need to know more. You know, to be to be hundred percent certain where you are with nil rate banding and that kind of stuff. You don't have to worry about the French unless you live in that one. Is is it worth talking about um domicile in this instance? Is that is this tied oh, to domicile? Oh well, yeah, okay. No, let's not go there because we'll be here all day, right? Okay, okay. So I will touch on that though, because it's important. Tax residency, 183 days, clear as day, no problem. You go, you do 183 days in, in France. In a single tax year, you become a uh, French tax resident. Domicile, on the other hand, is a totally different kettle of fish. And that is what in HMRC are interested in when they want you to pay inheritance tax. That's totally different. Domicile is a very hard thing to get rid of, much harder than people think. And Majesty's Revenue and Customs deliberately do that, okay? Because um, they, it's all smoke and mirrors because they want to be able to challenge situations where they can turn around and say, well, okay, you're, you know, you probably, according to the law, you probably don't have to pay, you know, but it's against the spirit of what we meant. So this is why they challenge a lot of this stuff. And this is why they deliberately make domicility smoke and mirrors. And you don't really know whether your domicile is 100% you're dead. Okay. So this is the problem that you've got. Again, Talk to me about that. I, 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 can, I can help you with regard to that. Because it, but, as, yeah. as an example, am I right in saying if, if you moved to France for the last 10, 20 years of your life and you still, for example, had family ties and assets in the UK, you would usually still be classed as domiciled in the UK. Correct, yeah. And, and, and therefore is. subject to inheritance tax there. And, yeah. That's right. People yeah, don't yeah. really always realise this. People don't, people, people don't realise that. So it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's smoke and mirrors. Talk to me. That's when, like I said at the beginning uh, during the presentation, inheritance tax can get caught. So talk to me, but we just need to work out where you're domiciled, where do they think you're domiciled, more to the point, and then work out, okay, we know that, let's do mitigate that kind of thing. Okay. 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 Yeah, let's leave that for it. We've got some questions coming in, which is yeah. great. Um, the more we answer these questions and the more things you say i'm thinking clients really need to come and talk to you quite soon in the process uh, yeah. so ideally before they even move to france so yeah. they can actually work out how they might want their estate structured uh, and that's you know, right yeah is that's that what right. you recommend yeah i would i would recommend that yeah absolutely it's, especially when it when it's more complicated or if they're not going to spend uh they're going to spend time in other countries as well um high net worths and that kind of thing even if you're not uh, it can get quite complicated but even if you're not it, um a high net worth um the vast majority of my clients are not are not sitting in that bracket you know um they, those you know big guns they tend to go to the um private banks right people who are like between sort of 400 grand and 4 million in net worth they come to people by myself um and yeah i will definitely them because it's very bespoke, especially if they're spending different amounts of times in France in different years. Need to speak. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's look at this question. Um, I think you might have covered this, but let's let's just recap. Are ISAs oh. tax free in France, same as oh. the UK? Do they exist in France? ISAs. Okay. What happens yeah, to your ISA when you go? Okay. To France? Yeah. Okay. So it's not illegal to have an ISA in France. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. And um, UK ISA, yeah, you're talking yeah about. that's right. It's not yeah. illegal to have a UK ISA in France. That's not the issue. You just can't add any money to it. No. Number one, and number two, the French will come off. A lot of the um, advantages of it go out the window once you become a French tax resident because the French will come after the capital gains. Okay? okay, so it's very simple. 
even if you like the investments that you've got inside the ISA, no problem. Do an in-species transfer into the product that the French approve. Yeah, you don't have to turn it in, you can turn it into cash if you don't want. Um, and that I come across that a lot at the moment because a lot of portfolios are down for obvious reasons, you know, uh, given what's happening in the markets, if their advisors have put them into lots of um, you know, high risk or equity kind of assets, you know, a lot of, a lot of has suffered in the, in the last few months. So um, so they want to keep it in those investments rather than realizing the loss. So they just can't do an in-species transfer over into the um, into the French uh, equivalent so they grow tax-free and French don't go after the capital gains tax on them. Hello? Hello? Oh, you're back. Yeah, great. Uh, okay. uh, another question. I'm fortunate to, sometime in the future, be the beneficiary of both inheritance money in cash and also trust money held in trust. If a French resident for tax, how would this be handled? Right, okay, again, um, so it depends, if you're a French resident at the time that you receive these funds, then it, it, you need to speak to me because it becomes a question of your domicility then, okay? So that's, that's, that's one thing to, to, to think about. Um, the other thing to think about is um, you know, if it's if it's coming in cash and it's not going to be so much of a problem. Um, um, can you repeat the question? Because there was a second part to the question that I wanted to they answer. They were going to get they were going to get cash inheritance yeah. cash, and yeah. then they had they were going to benefit from cash or assets. I think cash in a trust. Held oh, trust. trust. Sorry, yeah, that was it. That was it. Okay, right. Okay, so again, you need to speak to me because the French don't recognise trusts. So we need to set up something um, that uh, that the French recognise um, with regard to that. First of all, we need to work out your domicile. Where are you domiciled? Okay, and if you're domiciled in France and you've got no more uh, uh, connection to the UK, um, then um, trust is not going to help. So again, fortunately, we can put it in a vehicle where um, uh, uh, they can't come off. Okay. But the French do not recognise trust. Trusts are very much a British thing. It started when um, uh, a long time ago when we all decided we were going to, you know, um, 500, 600 years ago and the rest, go over to the Middle East, steal a lot of stuff and then come back. And then we had to put it into things like trusts. And when we went back again, they were still there when we came back. So that's where trust came from. Um, you know, back in those days, and it's, so it's very much recognised in the UK, not so much. Okay, they do not recognise Trump. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, that sounds a very uh, slightly more complex one. That, but yeah, uh, a, 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 on the same thing, but a bit simpler. As a French resident, so someone moves to France, uh, if I inherit, as an example, a hundred thousand pounds from a parent who's in the UK. Um, or was in the UK until they passed, and pay it into my UK bank account, am I liable for inheritance tax? No. no. We're not. You're not? Yeah. And that's because? Um, that's because it's your, um, it's your parents who are passing away. They're based in the UK. They'll come under uh, uh, UK laws. And also because it's going to be underneath the new right band anyway. Yeah. Nothing to worry about. Collect your money. Okay, that's a good answer. Yeah. Um, uh, inheritance tax allowance in France. Is it, yeah. per, is it per child allowance that you leave property or to you leave property to or per property? How does he how does how's it allocated in France? Okay, yeah. Well tax it allowance. Me, but yeah, if you go back to that um if you go back to that, it, all, it does depend also who you're um, passing the, the, the money to. So the bandings change um, when you're passing it to nieces and nephews, things like that. So again, you need to, to, to speak with me. It is super complicated the way they do it in, in France. It's not great, um, but there is a way of mitigating this stuff, right? So just you know, get, get in touch, especially with a question like that. Um, 
yeah but don't 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 worry about it just um speak with me and i'll explain okay thank you um just conscious of the time but we do have uh just enough time for one more a nice one to end on nice one to end on premium bonds oh like what happens to them can you keep them um yes you can keep them that's not that's not a problem it's just a question of um if uh um once they are realized you know, they will be subject to um French, French capital gains so just just bear that in mind um and, uh if you you know if you want to um, if you think that the, the capital gain will be will be large then speak with me and we can put it into a French compliant uh bond yeah so uh, it depends on the yeah. Sorry about some of these answers. They're a little bit depends, yeah. depends, because they they are very bespoke. But with something like that, yeah, they will come after the, the, the capital gains on it, and there's a ways of mitigating that. So but the, but you're allowed to have it, so you're not doing anything illegal. Okay, brilliant. Um actually I've got one final question. Just just uh looking at the different taxes that there are as a French resident, um, immovable assets, worldwide property, etc. Um, for someone who retires there and they do have things they need to declare, how do they organise? Do they, will someone like yourself, do that for you? Yeah, they I mean, have we to could... make their own returns and start trying to because it, it does look at, for yeah. me at least. Anyway, I wouldn't want to have to tackle that myself. Yeah, you you need to talk to an accountant in France. It's not something that we would that we would do. Um, we would, uh, uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, doing your tax returns and stuff like that we don't we we don't do that for clients but um clients will need to speak to someone local and yeah. Yeah, that for them and a, and a local account, accountant will take all that off your hand so that's not something you need to worry about you just need to speak to someone, um uh, in your town or okay the best way to do that rather than pretty much Okay, well, we are out of time now. Um, okay. So thank you very much, Malcolm. Absolute pleasure. I found that interesting. Um, appreciate you giving up uh, this half hour. Um, and like I said earlier, Malcolm, uh, Chase Buchanan, they've got a booth in the main virtual hall, so you can go and chat in real time to Malcolm there, swap contact details, ask any other questions, um, get all the information you need. Um, uh, and then after the event as well, this session will be... Uh, available to view on the your overseas home website so you can go back and and look at some of the things we talked about um still on france we've got another session on mortgages in france coming up towards the end of the day so if if that's applicable to you then tune in for that otherwise thank you very much for watching i hope it's been useful go and grab malcolm for further questions we're lucky to have him here available uh, and offering his expertise and, and um, advice so freely thank you uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.